we, we wanted to ensure that there is our branding. Now we want to see this branding uh, so that when we take the questions, and when the ministers respond to the questions, everybody must say that it's us who are responding to the questions who are part of the government of this country. So now we will get to the next uh, speaker, who's the Minister of Communications and Digital Technologies, Minister Dabene Abrams. Minister. Thank you, Director of the Program, Minister Mtembu, uh, my dear colleagues and comrades, the ministers on the other side, members of the media, fellow communicators, and to all those that are watching us today. I join my colleagues in a call that has been made by President Ramaphosa to say this is high time that we work together in ensuring that we minimize the impact of COVID-19 virus. This therefore meant that as the department we have a responsibility to make sure that amongst other things, we get the people of South Africa to communicate. Amongst other things, it is the platform that the people of South Africa must utilize in order for them to communicate. Key to that, it is the technologies and the software that the people must utilize. Program Director, I'm happy to say, last week a group of 23 CEOs gathered together to say as the industry, they want to help government and the people of South Africa to be able to realize what I spoke about. <clears throat> it is in this context that our consolidated input and response thereof to the COVID-19 virus looks to the following elements that I'll be talking to. The first one is that that you know of in terms of dissemination of real-time public information. The second one is to ensure access to communications infrastructure and digital services. The third one is to provide individual tracking and tracing through the existing legislations that we must look at and the platforms thereof. The other one is to support the following key sectors in, of, of our society, being education, health, and local government. Of course, if I, talk about, if I talk about access to communications infrastructure and digital services, it tells you already that one envisages a situation whereby there's going to be too much traffic on the network. That is a call has been made by the president for a lockdown, and Minister Mkunu has released the public service to say, go and work from home because we need you safe. And the private sector has done so. And therefore, as government and the department, we have seen it important that we therefore help provide capability to those that are providing the networks. It is in this context that ICASA, our regulator, is considering, amongst other things, ensuring that we will provide spectrum relief to those that must therefore provide the services. As they will be providing that relief, it has to be done in accordance with the law, taking into consideration what is it that we want to achieve, but most importantly, being able to keep track of the infrastructure that will be rolled out so that by the time we get out of this dilemma, the spectrum goes back, if possible, failing which the regulator will determine what therefore must happen with the temporal spectrum. It is in this context again that as the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies, we have seen and observed as people who are amongst others in this world that the education system has been disrupted. And of course, ours as the people in the technology space is to say, how do we then bridge the gap that has been caused by whatever that has led to us being here. And together with the Department of Basic Education, we will be working together in order to provide both broadcast and virtual classrooms. Our children are sitting at home, 
and they're playing cartoons, others are busy finishing food, parents are, are worried. And ours is to say, how do we make sure that our own students at home can be in a classroom whilst they're in their comfort at home? Which is why SABC has availed a channel that will be dedicated to education, including identifying two studios whereby the broadcast of the virtual classrooms will be provided. As we talk about this, we don't refer to videos that are recorded, that are going to be showcased, but an environment where we're going to have teachers live on the studio and in the virtual classrooms teaching children that would encourage parents to make sure that they wake up and put on their uniform like they will do when in their classrooms. We're bridging the digital divide. Ladies and gentlemen, as I talk about that, a sum of about 100 million has been set aside to enable the small businesses in our sector that should be carrying out the work that I spoke about. Could key to the work that we are doing is the emergence of disinformation or what is popularly known as the fake news. And therefore, as the department, we've engaged with the platform owners to say they must quickly remove any content that will be reported fake. We are happy to say the response has been positive and the platform owners have signed an agreement with the department. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, it is important that as we seek to overcome the challenges that we're faced with, whilst at the same time we deliver efficiently, technologies must be accessible. This therefore tells that our industry players may be looking for new equipment and we therefore call upon our authority to make sure that there's type approval of network equipment and handset devices based on the applicants meeting predetermined criteria. Because we would not have a time whereby we're gonna take 90 days to approve the equipment whilst you are saying people must get the services. But it's important that the authority follows all the processes within the short time without fail. Of course, it is important that in order to minimize the spread of the virus, as much as we have traced the trends of how far is the virus, but it's important also to look at the individuals that are affected in order to be able to help the Department of Health to say we know that in a particular area we have so many people that are infected. And that can only be enabled when we work together with the Department of Health and the operators that have capability to do so. The industry collectively has agreed to provide data analytics services in order to help government achieve this that we're talking about. It is important again that through our licenses on the audiovisual services that they must all make sure that they broadcast messages that talk to the health education of COVID-19 pandemic. As we talk about that, we will see the, tel the telecoms companies also sending messages. You've seen already Vodacom, Vodacom stay uh, home or stay safe. Already they've shown that. You've seen Telcom who pledged 15 million towards the work that must be done by the Department of Health. We are expecting more pledges as the mobile operators and the industry players continue to engage uh, in the specific services that they want to be involved in. Of course, through our agencies, UNAS, UNI USASA through the Universal Service Access Fund, we will be connecting all those virtual classrooms that I spoke about, which means we've got to increase bandwidth. At the same time, as we enable government to operate remotely wherever they are, CETA will be taking charge of that in terms of providing the equipment that must be provided whilst our infrastructure companies together with the SMMEs provide the, the, the bandwidth. The South African Post Office is directed to support the efforts and of the Minister of Social Development and SASA in so far as payment of social grants and of course in implementing measures to combat the spread of COVID-19. Amongst these is ensuring that we make sure that we stay away from each other but be able to render the service and therefore inclusion of digital services in the disbursement of social grants is encouraged because it is a very critical time. We have heard that most people want to exploit the opportunity in order to enrich themselves. We have therefore taken a decision that amongst the regulations the minister will be gazetting, 
the prohibition on price increment and mobile number portability will be inserted. This is done to ensure that we can avoid scammers or minimize the impact of scammers who will be calling people to say, we request your contacts because you are porting from this number to another number. And also the mobile operators themselves to increase the cost of data that I'm happy to report that all our operators have zero rated, not only the education uh, content, but also all government websites including non-profit based organization websites in a quest to say people must access the services of government. Fellow South Africans, South Africa is a religious country. We are faced with a weekend that is coming. People are heartbroken that they're not gonna get an opportunity to be in the, pul in the pulpit or do that that they do best during the Easter weekend. It is in this context that together with the broadcasters, both SABC, and those that are under DSTV that we've agreed that we're gonna clear some channel in order to ensure that South Africa has an Easter Sunday broadcasted and online. Google is our key partner on this one. This is meant to enable those that would have missed an opportunity to go to church that they can have uh, their church wherever they are, sitting in their lounges if they're watching TV in their lounges, and those that will be at work, they can utilize their devices through the platforms that are there. Engagements in the, with the stakeholders in this regard are still ongoing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you, but most importantly, I want to say we've called for these services that are being offered here by this gentleman and the lady in front of me the broadcasters that are here, our people in the print media space to say these are essential services. As we say there is essential services, there is therefore a need for them to be at work in order to keep the country informed at all times. But as they do that, as employers, we have a responsibility to make sure that they stay safe and therefore we have to provide equipment or tools of trade that will ensure that. Of course, there are non-core staff that we don't expect to be at work, but those that are expected uh, to, to go to work will have to continue with their services in order to keep the nation informed and educated at all times. Throughout the 18 radio stations of SABC and other channels, we'll be sharing information in relation to what is it that we can do as the people of this country in order to minimize the impact of the spread of the virus. I thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Minister Davene Abrams. We have now contracted.